it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Kids. I hope you're doing well. In today's video I'm going to be sharing my July colour combinations. I was inspired by Emma Colours 2020, um, the lovely Emma, to do this video and I've been doing this now as a series since January and I'm thinking of continuing with it hopefully on a monthly basis depending how busy I get at college. Um, whether I tie it in with my completed pages yet I'm not sure but for me it's helpful to talk through stuff and have it written down just for future reference and obviously it's useful hopefully for you if you're interested in seeing how I've coloured specific pages because I do get asked quite a lot what I used for certain things so it's just easier if I let you know and it's fun for me to do. So I've got uh, five pages where I have got um, colour combinations that I want to share with you. One of them I can't actually access because I have packed the flower year, um, which is the Painted Lady Butterfly. I've packed that um, for a holiday and it wasn't easy to access, whereas the other books that I'm sharing with you are. And as always, I will have the PDF copy of this in the description below. I appreciate the fact that it's hard when I'm holding it up and stuff to actually get a good view of what I've written down so that's why I always scan it in and you can zoom in if you want to if it's too small. But yeah let's get started. So the first page is from Die Welt unter der Lupe zu Wasser by Rita Berman. So the page I did in here was my first proper page. I've done the um, title page but oh sorry um, this was my first proper page. It was this one. So this was all with luminance. If you don't have luminance not a problem at all. The general idea though is just the colour combinations that I use, so the blue with the yellow, the brown ochre with the pink and blue, and then the purple pink with the green. And I used the yellow orange colour on all of them. So this was all luminance as I said. Now there was no particular way that I used them so I thought what I'd do instead is actually just write down what I used. So there's nothing special really with this. The background has zest it blend to make it smooth and then I've used Posca and fine liners as well for the different fish and I was basing them all on actual tang fish I believe the blue tang fish is what Dory is from Finding Nemo and then the others were just variations of um, real life colour palettes so that's that one there's not really too much to say about it because there were no specific techniques really apart from using those colours in different ways on the um, on the fish, but I did use them mainly light to dark. So doing a base of the lightest colour, going in with the darkest and then shading. So yeah, that is that one and I'm really happy with that. I can't wait to do another picture. I still haven't decided if I'm going to do this one with the same colours. We'll have to see. But that's that. So the next one is from Minor Resida Europa by Ruth Berman. Um, now the page that I did was a double spread and I only had one thing that I really wanted to keep from this because lots of the stuff I've done before. So if you're interested in seeing how I coloured the watermelons or the strawberries or the lemons, anything like that, the chances are they're going to be in one of my other colour combinations videos because I don't write down stuff again just for the sake of it so this would have been all of these things would have been from May where I did the double spread wave picture in the summer book by Ruth Berman so they can all be found there um, but yeah aside from that the thing that I wanted to remember was the leaf colour combination which was for any of the leaves and also the bushes and the trees and things like that because I was actually quite pleased with how they came out. So these are the colours that I use, quite a mix here which I know isn't always helpful but that's just what I use. So this is my typical thing of using the lightest colour as a base and then going dark to light and then furnishing with the with the base colour which in this case was an eroded tin so I was just testing out those but that's everything really with this. Um, I don't write down embellishments and things like that because they tend to be the same or I don't have that many embellishments so I kind of know what's what just from looking at it. So yeah, that's pretty much it on that page. But as I said, lots of that can be found in um, one of my earlier videos. And we have I Believe in Fairies. So this one was a lot of fun. 
So I wanted to write down quite a few things on this because I was using my Faber-Castell Black Edition pencils as well as the 24 set of Polycolor pencils, which are the skin tone ones that I have. So I wanted to keep that um, colour combination for the skin tone and the mouse written down because I really liked how it came out. But the sky was the thing that I really liked because a couple of the new colours in the 50 set were really unusual. So I wrote down that colour combination with the grey colours and then the poly colours were the lighter colours so it was going from the grey blue purple into pink and then yellow the mouse as I said was the same palette for the skin tone, the mouse um, I used a slightly different skin tone, well sorry not skin tone um, tone of the brown for um, the legs and the same sort of thing for the um, bag up here but essentially the only thing that was different about the skin tone in the mouse was that I used pink as a base for the mouse, whereas I used a lighter um, peach tone for the skin tone. But these are the colours that I used. All of them were the poly colours, which are only numbered, not named. And then the Faber-Castell Black Edition brick brown colour was what I used as a shadow, I think. Um, and then the blue coat, I wanted to remember this because I, again quite liked how this came out quite an unusual color palette and I did just have to come up with names myself for the Faber-Castell Black Edition because they don't have um, names or numbers I don't think so I did just come up with them and the and the other thing was the bow so I tend to do pink with green or purple with green quite a lot and I decided to do it for this because I knew I would need green anyway because of the leaves and I thought well, why not add some purple in as well I'd already got the purple in in the background, so it kind of made sense. So this was the Polycolor and the Black Edition pencils together. And again, this was just a very simple case of going dark to light for both of the colours. I think I only had, what did I have? Two greens and three purples. So yeah, they were the combinations for this one. There's not actually a lot to these ones because they're with the pencils that I'm fairly used to by now, apart from the black edition. and But that's hence why I don't have many um, combinations for some pages, just because I've used them before. So that's that one. If you aren't familiar with how my coding works, the B means base. Um, in this case for the blue coat, I didn't want the base to be really bright, so I had two bases. So I did the grey colour first and then the blue colour, which was brighter. Uh, S is shadow, H is highlight if I have any of those. Um, yeah, that's it, I think. So then we've got Mein Herz Spazier Gang by Rita Bell, and this is the pumpkin page. I did show how I embellished this page on the Summer Halloween video that I did a couple of weeks ago. Now, this is a unusual um, method for me. So the pumpkin itself was a lot of layering. <laughs> um, it was a lot. This was all um, what's this? Black Widow pencils, of course, apart from a few of Rogerton. So I've written here layer L to D to L, which is light to dark to light. So what that means is I went from milk all the way up to midnight and then all the way from midnight back down to milk so that's how many layers it was so you're like 16 layers or 15 16 give or take and then i burnished it as well so that did take a lot of layers but i'm glad that i did the layering especially for a bigger area like this um it's more simple for everything else so the the ground was just a simple case of three colors shading them the background was just two colors with the eroja tint as a base the leaves, again, still had milk as a base, which is an example of how I use a lighter cream colour as the base colour. So it's got a little bit of a yellow tone to it. But the shadow colour in this case for the leaves wasn't the darkest colour, it was the green tea. So sometimes I don't want a really dark, uh, well, the midnight was a black. I don't want the black to be the shadow colour because I still want it to come across as green. So then I um, add the shadow with the green at the end to burnish it. Um, there were two leaves, I should say, that's quite confusing. So these leaves here were the bigger ones. 
and then the leaves with the base is the fine liner with the brighter leaves so this and a bit up here as well so it's basically the same colors just with the base of the fine liner first and then the berries so these were sort of an orange tone underneath with red so if you're wanting a mixture of color on something i'd recommend trying to do that do like you could have done or I, I could have done red as a base and then just done the red shading but i didn't want them to be red i wanted them to be orange with the red shading if that makes sense so sandpiper was the color i used as the base then with tarantula and tarantula and chestnut which are dark browns but have a red tone to them so yeah that's what i used for those and then the last thing um was the flower year but apologies i can't show you now it is in my completed pages video also i tried to keep it as close to a realistic painted lady butterfly as i could so these were all the colors that i used i just listed them because there wasn't really any other way i could put them because they all sort of merged into each other but all of the colors were for different sections so the bottle green and mint green is just for the tiny tiny highlight bit in the, the middle of the butterfly peach tangerine tiger lily were all of the orangey sorts of um parts and then the yellow ochre cinnamon chocolate lamp black were the black going into the darker brown areas but they all sort of merged together and the cinnamon was the base for all the brown parts the tangerine was the base for all of the orange parts and yeah that's that's what i used for that and that's all holbein pencils if i didn't mention that but that's everything so I really enjoy writing these down and I will continue to do so because it will really help me. I will just quickly show you those colour combinations from May. So the strawberries are here, the berries, sorry, the blackberries, uh, what else, the lemons here. Uh, I think that's everything. The fish, I kind of took inspiration from the fish actually because I did green and purple fish on that and i thought i'd really like to do that again but lots of the things can be found here what i might do at the end of the year is do a pdf file of all of the months just so that you can have them in one file rather than having to go from one to the other but it's a really easy way for me to be able to give back to you in a way and it's it's a lot easier to have it written down as well rather than me trying to reply to the occasional comment about a specific thing so I don't write down everything but what I do write down I hope will benefit you if you're looking for specific colour combinations. I know for me now that I've figured out what my strawberry colour combination is with my Black Widows I use that one all the time because I really like how it comes out and it's easy to just go for it now that I haven't written down. So yeah that's everything I have to share with you. I will be doing this in August as well but yeah thank you so much for watching. Everything will be down below as usual including the PDF download and I will see you all in my next video. Take care everyone. Bye! <laughs>